Hi, I'm JP and uh, we're in Venice and uh, I live in Venice and right now I'm going to show my face just a little bit but uh, because of regulations I have to keep this back on so we'll cover up my ugly face. Right now we are in Canareggio and uh, I live here in this, in this area and I'm going to show you a different kind of Venice. Uh, not the tourist Venice but my Venice, the Venice that I like to participate in. We're out here in the lagoon. As you can see, it's pretty foggy today. And the guy, the, this handsome gentleman sitting next to me is Matthias Luhmann. Uh, he's a master boat builder and he came all the way from Hamburg. And what's cool about him is he's one of the first, I think the, the first, right? You were the first. The foreign, only one. The only one to build a gondola that was a foreigner to build a gondola, an outsider, and have it sold to a Venetian gondoliere and have it used on the Grand Canal. So he's kind of a legend. He works with us at Classic Boats Venice, um, the company that I'm the director of, and uh, we, we restore traditional uh, Venetian boats. And now uh, we're going to the Arsenale just to say a hello. Um, this is kind of a cool place. Let's see if the police stop us. <laughs> but we're going into the Arsenale, which is one of my favorite places because we're talking about boats and everybody that works here is in love with boats. You, you can't be in Venice without loving boats because it's part of the history. And where we are in right now, this at one time, this is one of my favorite places to be, was the biggest shipyard in the entire world. And the first kind of factory lines started here in Venice. pretty thick. We're on the island of Certosa now where we're based and uh, where a lot of our fun happens. It's not just we work here but we also when, on my off days I like to come here too to hang out because it's just a really beautiful island. It's an open area where there's lots of grass and uh, you, you feel nature here. You, this is where the lagoon starts of Venice and where I think the fun happens. Right over there you can see that abandoned structure there. That structure is about from the 1400s. Don't quote me on that. Um, I'm not a historian, but that was part of the original monastery that was here. The first group that kind that we know that kind of settled here was a group of monks called the Certosini monks, hence the name Certosa. And after they left, you had Napoleon, that little guy from France, and he brought his friends over and they set this island up in about 1797 as an artillery island to support the war effort for Mr. Bonaparte's wild adventures. <laughs> You are not allowed to skateboard at all in Venice. So that I work in Certosa, this beautiful island, it's amazing that I have all this space. The idea behind Classic Boats Venice was to create a company that was offering sustainable choices as it pertains to the marine uh, the marine industry, so to speak, in Venice. So we thought to take classical craftsmanship, traditional craftsmanship that was Venetian, in particular a boat like this, which is a San Pirota, which is a traditional Venetian uh, sailing boat and rowing boat, and to convert it instead with an electric engine so that we could rent this without driver and so that guests could come to Venice and experience the Venetian Lagoon in a sustainable way, but also in a traditional way. This boat over here, this is super cool boat. This is Sweet Molly from 1938. She's our flagship boat. This was one of the first boats that, that, that we brought into the company. Um, and we had a, did a full restoration of the boat. This is Lady Betty. And this was part of Queen Victoria's fleet. And uh, it was used not by the queen herself, but it was used by her admiral um, in the 1800s to kind of get to land from the bigger ships. This is the coolest part, the original gearbox from 1894. Every time I look at this, I just think about the history and it's incredible. She originally had a steam engine and we, we took the steam engine out and it has now the electric hybrid system going on inside of here. We're going with Carl, our owner of Classic Boats Venice, but beyond just being an owner, on our days off, we actually hang out together because we're actually friends. This is where the real Venetians live, work, and they come home to. 
and you're only going to hear Venetian language here. No one's speaking Italian here. And uh, you're going to find the real heart and soul of what moves Venice here. This area is called Castello. And I love, I love coming here on days off if I want to have a $12 meal. They call it uh, menu operai. It's the, uh, the worker's meal, so to speak. And what you're going to see here is when people tend to think of Venice, they tend to think of people in these extravagant clothes and beautiful shiny clothes. But here, the palette here is very gray and flannel colors. This is the real v Venice. And they'll have mud on their shirts too. They're workers. And that's what moves Venice. And you're going to feel that here in Castello. Of the Squero, which is a place where uh, they're building gondolas, repairing gondolas, and also traditional Venetian boats. And the Squero is the place where that all happens. The name in Venice, Squero. And the bar we're going to go to now is called Squero. It's traditionally Venetian, and you can find amazing cecchetti, which are the traditional Venetian styled tapas. And it's just the perfect place to, to meet people, but also see the scene outside, where you get to see the amazing boats being built uh, while you have a, a, a beautiful drink. There's nothing more indicative of Venezia than this place. And I, I totally recommend it. It's not expensive. It's run by Venetians. It's owned by Venetians. And uh, you get a sense of what Venice is and was now. And I like it a lot. <laughs> from 2020 looking at it, Venice has suffered a lot in terms of tourism and uh, we don't really know what the effects are gonna be. We're all in uncertain times, especially here in Venice, especially in the, the tourism travel industry here where we're wondering what's next for us. But on the flip to that, we're trying to stay positive, enjoying the quietness that we have now in this strange contradiction. We had a lot of guests who were looking for sustainable tourism, which was incredible, which was a big plus for us and uh, the cleanliness of the city definitely improved. It was a pleasure to welcome you inside Venice and to the day in the life of someone living in Venice. And uh, I hope to see you soon. <laughs>